Okay, welcome. So today we'd like to talk about what is a web service? What is a service when we talk about services and microservices in well, services oriented architecture? So let's have a look at uh, this application, my awesome app. So my awesome app is a mobile friendly application uh, which is able to chat with the user and translate um, what the user says. So he can understand any language, basically, yeah, something like that. So what is this application containing? So this is my full application. It has a web interface, so a web server to say so, some user management, it has a chatbot, and it has a uh, translation module. So what is this? This is what we define as a monolithic application because it is doing a lot more than just one thing. It's doing a lot of many different functions. So it is doing the user management, it is doing the web server role, it is doing the chatbot, it is doing the translation. So these parts inside, these modules, they're generally just code. They're code which are part of, of this application which is probably gonna grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So everything is coupled with each other and that's generally a problem. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to move away from this model for one reason, actually a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is it's hard to manage. Monolithic applications have issues with manageability and how they grow. Because any change that you make will basically trigger a testing on the whole application because we can't be sure that um, everything works unless we go and test everything again, and especially if you want to get into production. And the most important thing is it's just hard to manage. So generally, we want to try and remove things, decouple. Also, I'm not really a chatbot expert and I'm not really a translation expert. So I need to either find a person who can work on this or I can go and use external services, which is what I'm actually going to do. So the solution for this is a microservices based architecture or this. So this is still the same application. Nothing much has changed apart from where things are. So if we look at it, we have my system handling the web interface and also the user management. But now the chatbot and the translation modules are actually outside. And the fact is they have nothing to do with my source code here. They are external services and they talk through a web interface. So they have no knowledge of this part whatsoever. They're independent and I'm just using them because probably somebody out there created some really good chatbot service or some really good translation service. And we know that because for example, um, Google has a translation service. Um, Dialogflow from Amazon is a good, is incredibly good um, chatbot service. So we make use of what's already out there and we don't really need to be experts. So we dedicate our time to what we're really good at. And in this case, I'm really good at this part and I'm good at making use of what has been offered to me. So it's about composing things. It's not about creating things. If we keep it inside, that becomes a module or a function. But in this way, they are consumable services. What happened here though? The one thing that we have is that we have increased communication, which can be a limitation to our application, especially if we need to do a chatbot. But at this stage, we can actually deal with this. So what's the problem? The problem is that now our phone talks to the web server, the web server then talks to the chatbot service and returns that. And then that gets returned to the application again. That is my dog being a little bit crazy today. Um, so this is much more manageable and it's actually much more easy for this application to grow this way. I don't have a huge source base, uh, code base, and I can just keep on adding them by finding more and more services. But just to clarify, what defines a web service? Just to be 100% clear. So first of all, a web service has to be independent and does not need to have knowledge of who is calling it. 
So let's have a look at the chatbot, for example. The chatbot takes information of, for example, a sentence. It says, hello world. No, maybe not hello world. doesn't work in this case. It says, hello. And the chatbot will say, oh, I received hello. I have to reply hello to you. And that's it. That is one transaction. That is one complete event. And the chatbot doesn't care about continuity. Um, potentially, yes. In the chatbot specific, yes, because a lot of chatbots are able to continue the conversation. But generally, services serve one purpose, not many. So they are treated as black boxes. They are black boxes in comparison to the actual implementation. As you can see here, I have my awesome app, but I also have application two and application three. That means that the service must be independent and can be consumed by anyone. So I don't build it for me. I build it for anyone in the world who wants to use it. And it's one basic way of creating services. So this is a service. It is not a function. It is independent, treated as a black box. The basic way, the basic task to find out if your service is a service is, can I give this service to somebody else? Can I give the address to somebody else? And he can go and utilize it. If he can, that is a service. If it has any code related to your UI or how you're consuming it, that is not a service. That is your own code for your own application. So once again, service has to be consumed by other people other than you. Thank you. Bye.